This is an Israelite Jewels recording. Chapter 9. This, therefore, was the statute of the Church of Christ concerning the administration of the law of consecration among its members, calling each family according to their desires, to determine their stewardship. First, the wealthiest among the people who had their names recorded in the book of those who committed themselves consecrate their possessions to the obtaining of Zion, and being called by name, behold, every one of them was required to make a presentation of his goods, and how much each of them wished to consecrate to the Lord. Since it was not a matter of coercion, it was permitted be a partial consecration of each family, beginning with the tithing required by the law of Moses, and so progressively to the amount that each agreed to give in his heart, without any resentment, as they understood about the order coming of the celestial law. Nevertheless, many who began by consecrating only the tithe of all that they possessed and continually giving the tithing of all that they produced, but throughout their lives, past increasing their consecration, until many did so in their fullness, but each one, in his due time and understanding and giving only the amount which they promised to give, or all they had and produced, or only half of it, or even a third, but were not imposed on them, but all who had the desire to participate were accepted by the order, according to their yearnings and needs. Thus, the church had resources enough over in its stockpiles, and with that we could call the less well-off to understand their needs and to assist in what was paramount to them. Nevertheless, an assessment was made of the abilities and accomplishments of each individual or family to direct them to a trade, whether among the affairs of the church, of those who were wealthier, or even according to an office that would allow the church to intervene in aid with some commerce or breeding grounds and animal care, or even plantations, for the purpose of this family to get their livelihood, according to the desires of their heart, always having a reserve for the well-being of his family, and the rest returned to the storehouse for consecration for the benefit of others. Therefore was stipulated a period of time, in which this family would receive resources until it was able to support itself with its own stewardship. If this period ended without having reached enough for himself and his family, then the church would make new preparations so that he could obtain the sustenance of his house. This, as some have argued among us, does not fulfill what was required by the Lord Jesus, in having all things in common and in consecrating all that we have and not only a part, retaining the remainder for our own benefit, for how much he said that there would be neither rich nor poor nor slaves nor free among his people. Here is the understanding of the High Council, recorded in this statute, concerning the administration of the law of consecration among its members as to the obtaining and administering of their own stewardship. We understand that the law of Christ does not require us to sacrifice everything, it only requires us to live the basic principles of consecration in which we are required that our riches be available to the Lord, and that, while we retain some part of everything we produce in our own warehouses, yet the Lord expects us to be willing, if need be, to sacrifice our houses, lands, and estates, so that there may be a just distribution of riches. This, therefore, is what is really required of us in regard to our stewardship, that there be no rich among us, referring to the united order, for how much were some families suffering from need. For verily, verily, I say unto you, unless our intention as a church is to put all in equal conditions, in the sense that there is none among us, having some need, then we shall never be one, as was required us. Wherefore, if there be any rich man among the chosen ones delighting in his goods, while there remaineth a poor man among us, the rich man shall be required to give a portion of all that he hath to the help and benefit of his brother. But if this rich man refuse to help with the possessions he possesses, then he himself will be cut off and expelled from this covenant, but not from the people of the church, unless his refusal to help is an act of rebellion. Nevertheless, as the Lord is disclosing this great secret to us, the high council of the church feels sad about the grumbling among you, just as it was in the days of Moses, for how much we can not conceive in our way of thinking, the most effective way to designate this people their portions according to their families, and according to their yearnings and needs, if not by means of a previously arranged order according to the direction of the Church of Christ. Without the program of the Church to administer your consecrations, there will be no equity among men who will hold their resources for the benefit of their brethren, for how much each one will enter into debate with his neighbor to see who among them should distribute his surplus to the brother in need. Therefore, according to the commandments of Christ, this instrument, the High Council of the Church, has been instituted to administer all things related to the order of Enoch, 
and that the distribution of its resources is just and equitable, without that the wealthy among the covenant people benefit from the sacred order, while others, less fortunate, perish for want of help. This system will provide security and peace among the people of the Lord, for all will be able to worship Him in comfort and harmony, without resentment that some apparently have more than others, for how much a just distribution will be made, according to the desire and the need of each family, so that all may affirm that all goes well in Zion, that all prosper in common accord, and that all are happy within their sphere of stewardship, without there being limit to develop, if the one who received only a portion is willing to rise, as long as there is a responsible administration of the resources of the kingdom of God entrusted to it, delivering three or more times beyond what was required, increasing by personal merit, its own conditions in the family, as long as he maintains his covenant, giving all his surplus to the church's storehouse.